from Los Angeles, California, where the Mad Scientist Party are. Man, you like concerts. Oh, hello there, friends! Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name's Kevin Kraft. Joined by a man who has completely discarded his pants and underwear and is currently spinning a plate on the tip of his boner. That's Jeff Clark. Hey, what's up? And beaming to us straight from the doghouse, the bearded booger-eating hoarder known as Shuddy Boy. Yo. I like your cardigan to get today, Shuddy Boy. Thank you. It's chilly here, actually, today. The temperature has gone back to being not fun. I'm surprised you didn't go full Jeff Clark and, and pair it with a V-neck. No. Have you always been a cardigan V-neck. guy? No, cardigans are new. I bought one at the end of the winter last year and enjoyed it and then got a couple more this year. It. I like them better than zip ups for around the house. They're quite comfy. To, it's just, I don't know. Do they pair well with your um, He Man t shirts? Well, I don't know. You tell me. They pair better with a white v neck, I'll tell you that. That is not true. How much, how much of that cardigan's inspired by me, Jeff Clark? Zero <laughs> percent. I mean, how many years did I wear a cardigan on this podcast? How many years did we do this podcast without video? All right. But you <laughs> have always seen me in video, right? Or no. no? Do I not sit in front no, of the camera? No, we didn't. Oh, yeah. We have to shut it off because Kevin's internet's always fucking whack. Yeah, we never did video in the old days. We did it over Skype, but it was just Skype audio. Kevin, vouch for me here. Cardigan is my thing, right? I've he been rocking already, a cardigan for he, years. That's how he started this conversation off. Exactly. <laughs> so revouch for me. <laughs> All right. So you guys know what I'm talking about then. Yeah. Nobody, nobody is disputing this thing that right. you're fighting yeah, so Jeff, hard to make us agree with. You win, Jeff. You are <laughs> the champion of cardigans. Happy. That is your super cool manly title. That's all you. You win. That's all That's all I've ever wanted. Thank you. I just want to be the king of cardigans, v-necks, and taco meat. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> it's, it's not. Those are the three. He, wouldn't, if, uh, he would not be the king of v-necks or taco meat if I wore them regularly. Oh, wow. You're not going to knock me off the <laughs> v-neck and taco meat pedestal. Uh, j- I can knock you off the taco meat pedestal without any even effort put into it. That's gross. That's gross. Listen, yeah, my boy taco j- meat is sexy. Yours is just Shuddy Boy ugh. just flashed us. Yeah. <laughs> um, is does your back look like that, Shuddy? Thank God, no. What about your ass cheeks? Smooth as eggs, right? I don't believe my ass cheeks do. Here, you tell me. Oh no. Huh. <laughs> That won't be able to go on YouTube. I could blur it out like I did to your dickhead. <laughs> I just have to. I yeah. just. I would just have to bleep the crack. I think everything else is chill. I wouldn't even have to blur out your dingleberries. Well, thankfully there aren't the dingleberries. <laughs> yeah, uh, Miles oh. ate them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've seen some. I feel like. There's this account that I follow on Instagram. I, I, you know what? Is it at I don't want to ruin it. But there are some females on Instagram who I feel like get away with exposing some slightly shrouded but visible areola. Oh, 100%. Dude, that's all my Instagram shows me. I never used to um, look at the suggested posts on Instagram because I never gave a fuck. Oh. I'm like... I'm following everybody I need to follow. Fuck the suggested things. But then they um, they switch the layout a little bit, and I've occasionally hit the suggested posts by accident. And it's nothing but pussy wedgies. 
I don't know if you can see this. I just switched to it now. It's all like pussy wedgies in yoga pants. And like every camel time, toes? Yeah. But like real aggressive ones. I feel like the suggested post, suggested accounts page tab on Instagram is on point. I'm a big, I'm a big fan. Do you get a lot of um, vagina shots? Yeah, it's pretty much all vagina shots are like basketball dunks. Yeah, I get, yeah, though. I get skate videos, people skating, like full blown aerial is through see see through shirts. So Instagram knows that like there's areola is happening and they show them to me they're like hey look uh the the people we don't enforce the rules with you should follow them uh i mean i gotta be honest as 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 freaking as as weird and freaky as this whole instagram track and shit is they got me down to t man it's all hot i got hot chicks look at this sports updates i don't know if it's coming through very clearly but Really, really aggressive vagina wedgies. All right, well, I'll put my phone down because nobody gives a shit. But I've oh, got I was, this. Really, I was looking at this food. My Buck Instagram suggestions are uh, dogs, comics, He Man. Uh, there's some drug paraphernalia. I see some weed uh, stuff from time to time in there. Music, and then for some reason. There's this random, no, that's a dog. There's this this random thing in the corner that doesn't fit anything else of this girl, like, gyrating. (laughs) I have no, but if you look at everything else, it's all, like, nerdy pop culture stuff. There's a punk. Yeah. Some of the mohawk. And then there's just that one random. Some lady shaking her genitals. Yeah, dogs. I don't know why mine's got, so aggressive with that. I don't really, I don't follow like booty models. I don't follow any vagina wedgie girls. There's like one booty girl that I follow, and that's only because she came on the Ella show and followed me. So oh, look, I just look at this boy. Look at politically followed back. Good. Look at how cute. Oh, it's a good boy. Look at him just smiling. Yeah, just what smiling I beat off to. All he gets his scratches. That's my porn. A jacket to smiling dogs. I also on my was wondering... end, it's all. Go ahead, Jeff. I was gonna say, yeah. On my uh, well, I think you have a, a nice transition or segue out of this. But on my end, <laughs> uh, <laughs> on my end, it's all like DMX, sports, hot chicks, snacks. Uh, but I was gonna throw it to you about DMX because that's probably the I don't know in our little circle the biggest news story of the week, right? But I don't know if I guess you had something else to discuss. Well, no, I was actually just curious because. Um... I don't know. Old man craft sometimes doesn't understand technology. Sometimes when I look at people's Instagram stories, it looks like they're reposting somebody else's video and there's the little play icon on it. But anytime I press it, it just goes to the next Instagram story. Am I the idiot or are the people idiots? Why doesn't it ever work? No. Why can I never watch those videos? I think it's hit or miss. I think sometimes it takes you to the video and sometimes it goes to the next part of the story or the next account yeah i don't to me i don't get it it's like a 50 50 and it's kind of annoying i find it frustrating too it's like you have to like press directly on the name or something and not the play icon yeah i don't know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it's something i notice as well though but yeah you did mention uh dmx which is a huge bummer yeah um, dude I mean, he did live, he lived a pretty hard life. I mean, do you think DMX was making it to 70? I'm not trying to be a dick, but like, could you imagine a 70-year-old DMX? No. But I was, like, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't aware of or wasn't, like, I don't know, paying attention to, like, his drug problems. Oh, yeah. I guess, I guess. I guess they're pretty bad. I, I knew that he liked to party and did drugs, but I didn't think like, you know, he would be overdosing that type of shit. But what it did, what was the drug that he did? Do you know? I don't even know if they've released that yet. I do know that because like we covered anytime something happened with DMX, we covered it pretty closely on the Ella show. 
So I would get all those updates of you know him Why? relapsing, going into rehab. Because DMX is the man. He is. All right. I, yeah. I feel like DMX is he is like one of the more popular rappers in like action sports and like skateboarding. So maybe that's yeah. why or maybe I'm Well, cuz I saw a bunch of posts too from like Tony Hawk and Bucky like he would go to, you know, I guess the the Boom Boom Huck Jam and go to like X Games and stuff. And there was a video or a picture of Bucky like just doing a big air over DMX as he was sitting on a on a half pipe. So he yeah. like crossed the streams with those guys. I, I've got a, a a likely stunning admission that could have me ringing the shame bell, but I don't think I've ever seen any of DMX's movies. Oh, yeah, yikes! So I you re- Romeo Must Die. He was in right. Yeah, Romeo there's a chance. Rules. There's a chance I saw that, but I don't remember any of it. So it might just be like a false memory. I don't know. So you've never seen Belly, huh? Oh, okay, okay, I've never okay. seen Belly. I have seen Belly, but I just didn't think of that I, as a DMX movie. I've never seen cool. Belly. Slightly disrespectful. I know. Maybe is, we should uh, do DMX movies as homework until we've all seen them all. I'll do that. I need to rewatch Belly. I haven't seen it in like five years. But that's oh, like it's a, been longer than me. That's a fucking like classic. It looks like, like it's on Hulu. Classic. I just googled it. I think it's on Hulu. I might just so that buy might that be in the cards, so I can have it. Uh, I'm going to. I'm on a DMX's IMDb page. Just want to be refreshed. I know. Yeah, Exit Wounds. Well, that was I, one with Steven Seagal. That one yeah, kind of kicked ass. I don't think I saw that one. He's got 58 acting credits, so maybe watching all the DMX movies is not a. <laughs> yeah, that might be a, a lot of these are like video shorts. Uh, all like right, ex- okay. Extended music videos, but all right. Yeah, Fair I mean, enough. we just have to boil it down to like five. We have Romeo Must Die, Exit Wounds, Belly. Uh, what else do we have here? Cradle to the Grave. I'm not even that familiar with it. I that was the one with that, Jet Li, right? Is that the Jet Li one? <laughs> he, I, well, I, he was in. I think he did two with Jet Li. One was R- Romeo Must Die, and then one was. Cradle of the Grave. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe he did two with Steven Seagal. Oh yeah. Maybe I'm. Let me get. Maybe I'm all Cradle fucked up. Yeah, I remember the first song I heard of DMX was "Stop Being Greedy," and thinking like when I heard that on the radio, just, like the the backing track on that always reminded me of Castlevania for some reason. And I'm like, holy shit, this guy raps over Castlevania shit. This is fucking awesome, <laughs> dude. It's dark and hell is hot. Is an unquestioned. That is a five dick album right there. I yeah. love that album. I traded. I, I said this on uh, Twitter or social media when I did my RIP or pour some liquor out DMX. But I remember trading a hockey stick when I, <laughs> I think I was twelve at the time for that album. <laughs> I remember that shit. So that's like how long I go back with DMX. I, I love DMX. Why did you have I've a hockey seen, stick? I played hockey growing up. Did you? Yeah. Like, I'm guessing roller hockey, right? Yeah, well, or I, I New played York, mostly play street. Hockey. Yeah, yeah. I played street hockey. I could ice skate a little bit, but like, my problem with I'm ice hockey. A, I'm was more of a always, figure skater. <laughs> my problem with ice hockey is that it was just too expensive for my parents to like kind of buy all the equipment and put me in. I yeah. got hand me downs for roller hockey and played like a, a shit ton of roller hockey growing up, like street hockey. And then I played in the league um, when I was like 13, 14. But that's kind of when I grew out of it. Well, I didn't really grow out of it. My parents just couldn't afford it. <laughs> so, but yeah, I grew up playing. I was better at hockey than I was at basketball. I was actually nasty at hockey. Holy shit. Shaft. The Samuel Wait, L. Jackson right. one? Yeah, he was in the 2000, well, performer, I guess. So, yeah, like, like Shuddy kind of alluded to or talked us into a lot of these are like his acting credits, 70. A lot of these acting credits are like just like music video shit or just like random like cameos shit. This one, I'm in a different tab. So I'm just talking out of my ass right now. Anyways, DMX, do you know what D- DMX stands for? Was it Darkman X? That sounds right. 
Dark Man Extreme, but yeah. All right. Okay. Do you think he was a big fan of that Liam Neeson movie? It has to be. <laughs> what a what a I'm random movie to latch on to. For real. You have to see Belly though. I'm very interested in your opinion on that, uh, Shuddy. And and yours, Kevin. I mean, I haven't seen it in years, so it'd be just a good movie if we can get a hold of it and like do some homework on it. But I probably haven't seen Belly in like twenty man. years. It's been a long time. It's it's I it's been somewhere at least five, if not ten years. It's been a while. You know what? I just I just um I watched a movie last night into this morning that I hadn't seen in a very, very long time. That I know is is close to Shuddy or maybe Shuddy's ex. But I watched The Crow. I hadn't seen The Crow probably since I was like in high school. It's been a few years since I've seen it. It was certainly way better when I was younger than nowadays, but I mean it has how, its how corny it hold up. It has its corny moments for sure. And I don't know how much of it was just the nostalgia factor, but it still kicks ass. I I I, I classify it as a solid four dicker. And underrated performance in that one that nobody really talks about. Ernie Hudson was the fucking shit in that movie. Ernie Hudson yeah. was awesome in that movie. Yeah. I feel like he doesn't get enough enough credit for that one, but he had an awesome character and he acted his fucking nuts off. That's I haven't I haven't moved Crow off of my five dicker list. It was a five dicker when I was a kid, and I haven't seen it in a long time, so I'm not gonna readjust it. The reboot Especially. of it is stuck in development hell. They're still trying with that, huh? Well, I don't know if they're still trying anymore, the Crow reboot. Did you ever watch I it with like... your son, Shuddy? Yeah. What did Draven's you think? seen it a few times. Was he pumped oh, to be named it after? Says... Was he pumped to be named after uh, Brandon Lee's character? I don't think he really cares one way or the other. <laughs> Doesn't um, he, kinda... he wasn't like, that's, seriously, that's Dad, this is what you named me after? Wow, your uh, Shuddy's kids, your Shuddy kid impression <laughs> sounds pretty similar to his dad. <laughs> According to this article from last January, it's back in active development. Who's supposed to be playing the crow? Is it Edward? Furlong I don't think again? anybody knows. Uh, let's see. If it's not if being Asian article guy, right? says it was going to be Tom Hardy or Corin Hardy. Sorry was a, a, attached to direct with Momoa being the main character. Whoa. Gigantic fucking crow. Uh, and then they both left. Oh. Yeah. Uh, all and right. then, uh, the last I had heard was the dude from the fast and the new fast and furious movies. Is that James Wan? I feel like he does a bunch. Oh, are you talking about the actor? The actor. Um, the brolic Asian dude? Tony, it's got to be an Asian guy, right? No, it's the one. It's, Hollywood? Uh, the British guy that is. Statham. J- Statham Statham's brother. Henry he Gavel. He was the bad guy in. The Rock. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> honestly i'm surprised they made sequels of the crow like i would be wouldn't you be sketched out like man i saw how well you guys took care of the last fucking guy fucking killed your star on the set i can't believe anybody associated with that movie ever worked again even though the director he did make um dark city which i love but it still blows my mind like I feel like people dying on the sets of movies should have been something that was phased out and they they got the kinks worked out before 1994. Well, I mean, uh, isn't Owen that Shaw, the only... Luke Evans. Isn't that like the only Hollywood death? 
really the past like 40 years um, 50 i mean of like a star do we do we, do we count the do we count the uh, wizard of oz deaths <laughs> well those aren't even real <laughs> but like uh the there was that notorious one from the twilight zone movie where um they had a stunt where like a, a helicopter crashed in the water and the fucking star of the movie grabbed like a little kid or two and were running and the goddamn helicopter chopped all their heads off or something like that. Oh. It's insane. But again, that was what, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, 60 years ago at this point. I mean, it might have been in the death, 70s or 80s. Granted, it sucked. Like Brandon Lee would have been an epic star. I love the crow. But, you know, a one death over 60 year rate, that's not bad. We can live with that, right? I mean, the stats are probably like if you look at the amount of movies that have ever been made and the amount of people, where the amount of times the star of it got killed on set, it's probably pretty low. But like, I don't know, The Crow, a big studio production like that, you got to feel like they're checking their fucking prop guns. That's just the most insane thing that's probably ever happened in movie history. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's a real fluky event, that's for sure. Yeah. But I got to say, Crow still fucking holds up. I remember I watched it so much as a kid because I loved the soundtrack, too. Soundtrack is fucking awesome. Um, and it was one of those movies that I think I watched so much. I was just like, ah, I've seen The Crow a whole bunch, and it just never got back into my, my viewing list. And I saw it on HBO Max, and I was like, oh, I got to give, give The Crow another watch. And yeah, can't rain all the time. <laughs> yeah, fucking holds up, man. I never ended up seeing any of the sequels. Did you watch any of them, Shuddy? I watched City of Angels once. Real bad, right? Uh, it was not memorable enough that I ever thought that I'd watch it again. And they, man, it's two. It's ninety nine, nineteen ninety six. They waited two years to make another one. Like, whoever plays the crow after that, he had to be shit in his pants the whole time. I wouldn't want to walk. Well, in there I at mean, all. it's kind of crazy that they would just, I don't know, not, not retire it for at least a decade. I know, two years. You know, holy shit! And then they did the one with Edward Furlong and uh, um, Kirsten Dunst. Uh, well, and and Tara Reid. Sounds terrible. Kirsten Dunst was in one too. All right, I'm in the soundtrack right now. The Got soundtrack the for City of Angels was fucking amazing. Was it? Yes. Here's the Crow soundtrack. We got The Cure, Stone Temple Pilots, Big Empty, Violent Femmes, Nine Inch Nails, Rage Against the Machine, The Jesus and Mary Chain, Medicine, My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult, I don't know some of the shit. Rollins band, helmet, helmet, for love, not Lisa, Pantera. So some heavy hitters there. Yeah, for sure. Let me. Uh, you said the sound. Which which one is this? The Crow City of Angels. Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> no. So <laughs> why is it not here? So Crow City Hole, of Angels. Filter Bush. Toadies, Iggy Pop, White Zombie, PJ Harvey, Deftones. Yeah, Iggy Pops in uh, City of Angels. PJ Harvey, that rap in there? No, no that's PJ. <laughs> Sorry. Fucking Dookie Boy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> kind of a dad joke ish. Uh, but Shuddy. Dad joke adjacent. We were talking briefly, as long as we're talking movies and stuff. You checked out a series new to you. New to me. Uh, yeah, I, we watched the first two episodes of Black Monday last night. And it kicks ass. D- have that, you seen it, Kevin? I haven't. It's it's HBO, right? It's actually Showtime. Oh. What streaming service did you watch that on? Showtime. Anytime. Oh, wow. Shuddy's a baller. How many How many streaming services do you have? Oh, well, because we pay for Showtime in our cable, 
<laughs> we oh, have well, access go. to their streaming platform. Uh, ask me how many times we've watched Showtime on the television, though. I'm guessing how, this is your first. How many times? Hmm. The TV, the cable, uh, since football season has ended, the the uh, and the runoff election, the cable hasn't been on. Maybe it's time to cut the cord finally, Shuddy. Think of how many He-Man toys you could buy with those savings. Oh, uh, I'm not I'm not hurting for He-Man toys. We're fine. Oh, how many are on their way still? On their way? I don't believe there is one really beat up Panthor on its way that I bought so I could deflock it and have a black panther to go with the figures but that is the only thing currently in route are you itching uh a little bit a little bit and just before we went on the air fonzo sent me an instagram post from mondo about their new one six scale figure that drops tomorrow Hey, Fonzo, we're, we're not looking for enablers at this point, okay? <laughs> you know what you should yeah, do? We're having should... A, we have a problem. We're trying to get him out of it. You should yeah, just... and I literally just came home with a Mondo figure this weekend. So You should, Shuddy, you should spam him back with every Baby Yoda um, product you find. Oh, yeah? Well, take this. I don't consider it spamming. I consider it as him looking out for me. <laughs> Prospecting. I see it as him feeding uh, an addiction. Well, but Shuddy Boy, were you this big into He-Man when you were a little kid? I was uh, for three Halloweens in a row until the costume no longer fit me. I was He-Man. Oh, Jesus. Do you have any pictures of that? Do, you, does you, do your parents have any pictures of that? I'm sure my mom does somewhere. Oh, we got to dig those up yeah. and put them on the MSPH Instagram. I want to see tight He-Man. I, I see have the, the, the third year of He-Man. So, yeah, I was He-Man for a few... I was very into He-Man as a kid, yes. What were... So once you outgrew your He-Man costume, what were you the following year? Do you remember? Um, I don't... There are only two other Halloween costumes I remember. Uh, I was... When did... The Flash TV show was out, so I wanted to be the Flash one year. Was that that was in like the early nineties, right? I don't I I'm looking that up now because I was definitely still living in New Jersey when that happened. Um We're still talking about childhood for the record. Yes. <laughs> okay, and cool. we moved to um Pennsylvania. Yeah, it was 1990. And then, so that, so, and then I think, and then a, a year or two before that, I was a biker because I had my older cousin gave me his dirt bike helmet. And, but those are the only Halloween costumes from my childhood that I can remember. I, and the was, He-Man costume uh, has shown up in my eBay searches occasionally, and no adult sizes. Well, obviously not. Uh, but why? Well, I, so I haven't found a need, felt the need to buy it. Uh, but yep, here it is, sixty bucks. I feel like I had a ninja costume a couple of years. I love. Oh, ninjas. you know what? I was a ninja. Yep, that was one, too. I had a notoriously questionable one when I wanted to be a zombie astronaut, and it just happened to fall on the same year of the Challenger explosion. So you wanted you were <sighs> wanted to be a zombie astronaut when you were five? Yeah. And my mom was trying to explain it to That's me. Great idea. Clearly, kindergartners don't really follow the news, and I just <laughs> didn't understand why she was like explaining it to me. She's like, Kevin, a whole bunch of astronauts died, and people are very sad about it. And I was like, "But I'm not that. I don't. I'm not want to be them. I'm a different one." She's like, 
she, like her trying to explain optics to a five year old was just not landing. Um, I did a devil costume one year. I think I was a clown once. Uh, Lenny Kravitz, which I somehow managed nice to dodge. Nice blackface, Kevin. No, there was no blackface. My Damn. my mom had the foresight to uh, not do any cultural appropriation. I just had a fucking goatee painted on with mascara. <laughs> and dre- did you- and dreads? No, dre- I don't Facial think I had pro- dreads. Maybe I did have dreads. I don't know. Facial hair appropriation is going to be a thing soon, Kevin. Oh, I know. That's why I shaved mine off. <laughs> All right. I'm glad so that that I didn't gotta, really have much of I a started- reaction out of you guys, too, by the way. I feel like this is going to be the first big exposure of people seeing me without facial hair. And I'm preparing myself for the barrage of comments of people that want to give me fashion advice 24 hours a day. All right, you fucking diva, you want us to we, focus he had on to, your new haircut and your, and your clean yeah, shave? We didn't was, give him the attention he wanted, so he had to point it out to us and make us start talking about it. I was expecting a you clowning. You look wonderful, Kevin. I was expecting look, a clowning. You look wonderful. All right. Well, I got the clowning I was expecting. It was just for a different reason. All right. <laughs> anyway, what about, so what about Black your costumes, Monday Jeff? Stars oh, yeah. Don Cheadle, uh, Ken Marino, Regina King, Paul Shears in that, right? Paul Shear. I started reading about it when you brought it up. I'm, it sounds interesting. And it's about the stock market crash in 1987. I hear it's awesome. It's it's really good. The first two episodes were fantastic. There are, it. I mean, it is chock full of 80s pop culture references. I like that. There's, in the first episode, there's a 45-second conversation about Top Gun. Uh, second episode, Masters of the Universe gets referenced. Oh, my God. Like, it's just, it's fantastic. Oh, the take King it easy on me, Black Monday. Don Cheadle's character has a limbo, which is a Lamborghini limo. Whoa. That is pretty sweet. (laughs) It's a baller move. I like that. Respect. (laughs) Yeah, and just cocaine is just flowing everywhere. Uh, It's it's a dark comedy. As it 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 should be. It is. It's it's dark. I mean, I'm only two episodes in, so nothing, but the very first scene of the very first episode is you. I mean, you don't know who it is. There's some hints, but is somebody jumping out of the stock exchange and killing themselves on the roof of the limbo. Oh, dang. RIP limbo. And that guy. And then, so that it starts on black Monday and then it goes, it's a flash. It, it goes, it starts a countdown. So then it starts a, the it goes, actual episode. Then it goes to Black Tuesday. Starts Black a Wednesday. year before Black Monday. And then each episode is closer to. Oh, it's like a prequel show leading up yes. to it. Okay. Correct. So. Well, if I had Showtime streaming, like, I'd check it out. Yeah, I got to I gotta get that too, I guess, if I'm going to watch it. But um, the first season is on Amazon. Hmm. Okay. I'll have to take a I look do see remember how, seeing that when I searched it. See how pricey it is. I believe I it's usually, included with Prime. No way. Oh, I usually yeah, only watch supermarket queefs on my Amazon Prime or supermarket sweeps. Sorry, I was thinking about our show, but you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um, no, Shuddy, it's free on Prime because you have Showtime. Oh, no, it just I, I searched it on my Roku. I don't have my Showtime linked with. It just said free with subscription, so I assumed that that meant Prime. I didn't look into it further. I apologize. Oh, yeah, it looks like the first episode is free, and then each episode after that, if you want to buy them single price or single, it's three bucks in HD, or you can just buy the whole season, I guess, uh, for oh, right. 25 bucks. Eh, we'll see. I'll, I'll get your that final kind of money. Shuddy's in need to suck seven Black Monday dicks. <laughs> yeah for real but it's it's very good so far i really like it i'm looking forward to watching more nice 
Um, so we we sort of went off on a tangent there, but I am curious <laughs> to circle back to what Jeff's costumes were when he was a kid. I don't even really. I, I'm not a big Halloween guy. Never was. I stopped like dressing up when I was pretty young. Yeah, like uh, candy, really? Can- that, that really, yeah, that really is weird. That with snacks involved, you wouldn't have dressed up. Wanted to dress up as a kid for as long as possible. Oh, all the like, other I kids pulled, at like, school the- are dressing up, and I feel like a poser. <laughs> yeah exactly you know how contrarian i am i zagged on halloween when all the other kids were zigging oh i'll show no, you I think I pulled... you know what i'm doing on so- on halloween i'm just gonna eat a bunch of celery fuck I'm you nerds. stoned i can't really remember <laughs> like a lot of costumes honestly i feel like i pulled the jim Hap- halpert a couple years where i just was like you know where he he you drew put a name uh, tag what he had a name tag where he was Dave or he had like, didn't he write book on his face? He's like on Facebook. Yeah. 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 You no, know, the Jim Hopper. So I, I think I, I was kind of like a Halloween Grinch for a few years. I remember my father making, I, I was uh ultimate warrior when I was young. I remember that. I think <laughs> I have a picture of that hanging uh phone around the internet some, somewhere. Uh, I was Wolverine once. Uh, I would I I don't know. Those are like two of my like go tos. I feel like Wolverine and Ultimate Warrior. Like, oh, he's a nerd. Trying Let's to get think. him, Shuddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, yeah. When I dressed up for Halloween, of course it was like nerdy superhero shit. I'm sure I was Batman one year, stuff like that. <laughs> but I don't, I don't remember. I don't, I, I tell you what, I wasn't, and I'm still not thinking of something as cool as Zombie Astronaut. Like that's actually like a decent Halloween costume idea now. Well, I, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a little kid because I think every little kid wants to go into space, and it's like, oh, there's a profession that sends you up there? All right, sign me up. Yeah, I was afraid of the asteroids. Fuck that. Keep me, <laughs> keep me here. You didn't want to go up and fight them? Like you could be up there to destroy oh. them for, for Earth. I've always been a very sea level land guy. Oh, so you're just gonna you're just gonna stay on Earth and get cucked by the asteroid, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm gonna have <laughs> Bruce Willis handle it. That's that's <laughs> I'm just gonna watch him and root for him. That's the amount of my involvement. <laughs> or extent. Oh. I just pictured Jeff yeah. walking around as Wolverine and be like, Oh, I feel like such a pussy right now. I don't know. I've always, I, yeah. I, as far as Halloween goes, I've always been kind of a Grinch when it comes to dressing up. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like dressing up. For some reason, that does seem like painfully on brand for Jeff. Right. It does. It does fit into my profile. I feel like that. I wouldn't be much of. I. Oh, there, I there like, goes. Imagine that Jeff was a wet blanket as a kid too. Who saw that coming? Honestly, <laughs> now now that I'm older, I kind of like Halloween even more. Like there was a time when I was like 12 to like 16 where it was fun going out and like, you know, doing goofy shit for on Halloween. But then like in college, even though some of my favorite party nights were actually coincidentally Halloween in college, but in college, I wasn't that much of a fan of Halloween where I feel like everyone was. And nowadays, like the older I get, the more I, I kind of want to take like a kid trick or treating, you know, like, I think that would be a fun experience going trick or treating with kids. I like passing candy out to kids. Like I like watching Halloween movies with my brothers or whoever. Now, oh, that's but, like, a scary vampire costume. Here you go, Butterfinger for you, Butterfinger for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, dude, I would love to just like, yeah, crush. I, I love crushing a bowl of candy and handing out the remaining shit that I don't eat to kids. <laughs> <laughs> but that's. Again, that's now that I'm in my mm, close to mid thirties here. Close to. How old are you now? Yeah, don't no, technically. Are you thirty four? Uh, wait, wait, you're twenty. I'm yeah, I'm thirty four. I'm gonna turn thirty, so I am technically in my mid thirties. Yeah, you get three years of each. It counts from four to seven, right? Or four? It's four to four six. to six. Four yeah. to six. Okay. Uh-huh. Ah yeah. ha! Everybody point so, and laugh at old Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking over the hill. Uh, I watched something this past week. I watched the... What did you watch? The final movie 
that I hadn't seen that's nominated for Best Picture this year. I saw The Father with uh, uh, Anthony Hopkins. And I was really hesitant to watch it. Because everything else on that list, for the most part, is that misery porn shit that I've been complaining about all year. And I've actually been in high spirits lately. And I was like, do I want to fucking ruin this to be a completionist? And did you ruin it? I gave it a shot. I watched it. And it wasn't what I was expecting at first. So it's like, clearly he's an old man. And he's in his, like, flat in London. And his daughter comes to visit him and says, you know, she wants to get a nurse to stay with him and keep an eye on him when when she's not around and that she's going to be going off to Paris. And he sort of fights it and he pushes back. And he's like, I'm, look at me, I'm perfectly capable. Look at this, I just made myself a spot of tea. I don't need help. <laughs> and then weird shit starts happening. So, like the actress playing his daughter is some, suddenly different. And he's like, well, wait a second, who the fuck are you? And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm your, I'm your daughter. And he's like, no, you're not. I know what my daughter looks like. You are not her. And then she gets all bummed out. So the whole movie, just this weird stuff keeps happening. Like actors are switching out. Um, the things that people are saying to him start repeating. Uh, like uh, people just start appearing in his apartment. And he's like, well, now who the fuck are you? Oh, let me get to a spot of tea. Oh. But so that's pretty buried the lead that Imagining Poops is in this. I was gonna get to that. Right. Jeff's Jeff's girl, Imagining Poops. Her career is really just uh firing in all cylinders these days. If she was a trading card, I would have bought her early and she would be super valuable right now. <laughs> I knew Imagining Poops was gonna be a a star right when I saw that stupid fucking name. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, exotic name, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was sort of like a like a thriller mystery, and like it did sort of touch home because you know you're you're wondering if people are fucking with him because he thinks like his family's trying to screw him out of his apartment. So like, is he being fucked with? Is this his dementia? Is he an old? Ma- is he just? Is this just him being old and confused? And you know, my grandpa is the same age as him, and he's been in a home and. There was a a big scare over the weekend. Like, we almost lost him. He's been battling, like, a really bad infection. And, you know, he had to be admitted to the hospital. And they gave us the news. They're like, look, it's it's pretty much a coin flip. He's got a really bad infection that's gotten worse. We're going to try this, these crazy strong antibiotics. And tonight is, you know, the pivotal night. If these antibiotics work and he survives, it'll be, he'll be back to normal. If not, this is probably his last day. And thank God it worked. And he made a, a recovery and he's he's more cognitive and with it than he's been in a long time. But it, it you know, that stuff being so fresh and watching Anthony Hopkins get like sad and frustrated with himself, it hit a little harder than probably most. But I will say for a movie that was still kind of sad and stuff, I I enjoyed it more than all the other misery porn shit that's out there. Like, the acting was really good. It's it's not a long, dr- dragged-out movie. It's like a tight 90, 95 minutes. He kills it. Olivia Coleman kills it. Imagining Poops kills it. Uh, it was solid. I'll give it, I'll give it a four-dick. Four-dicker. So it's essentially dementia from his point of view. That's what you're, like, led to believe throughout it. It's sort of like a mystery as you're watching it. Well, isn't that... Do they... Well, they, I guess I, it resolves at the end, Jeff. I could spoil the whole movie. Uh, all right. I can text well, you. I guess I can text you, so you, I don't ruin it for the Puminati. If anybody gives a shit, you, I don't know how many people are looking to go see the Father. I literally only, I would not have watched it if it wasn't a Best Picture nom, and it was the only one that I hadn't seen. I just, I just want to know if it's worth, like, if the ending or the explanation is worth me watching. Because I am slightly you? interested. Do you want me to I'm, text I'm, you? Uh, do you want me to ruin it? I don't want it ruined, but All right, then watch okay. It. You know what? And there's you're, obviously you're... a twist, Jeff, that Kevin doesn't want to say. Let's think about that. Well, like, that, I mean, that's obviously, the, okay, that's the point of the whole movie but, is wondering if he actually has dementia or if he's being fucked with. But am I? I what I guess what I'm wondering 
is like how if does there it is a twist it would have to like it would have to be so good or else the movie i think would be ruined so i that's why like i'm very interested uh, as to how good this movie is or how, how much i would like it kevin you're good with this stuff you know me do you think i would like this <sighs> it's tough i don't know because it's not like a it's not boring like it really hooks you in because you're like all this weird shit keeps happening. And you're like, oh fuck. So it's it's not like some boring sludge drama that you have to like torture yourself through. Like it actually went pretty quick the runtime. I guess yeah. I just I'm just wondering if like if it's like like if it's more mystery or if I'm gonna be sitting there the whole time like oh this old dude's got dementia. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, Jeff. Yeah. All right. All right. As as Man, as we said what before, an interesting review. Young Jeff Clark, not a Halloween fan. The one the one uh, holiday for children that celebrates candy, and Jeff was like, ah, not for me. Yeah, I did enough to be able to go trick or treating, so I could get the candy. <laughs> that was like my focus. I only do the bare minimum, so I can just knock on doors without these parents or hey, homeowners I'm, being assholes to me i'm monica Lewinsky. get it <laughs> <laughs> man i mean um, all right the father yeah i got you know i got some grandparents that are kind of waning down here the stretch and uh it's a tough watch i feel you on that one it's a tough watch being that. in that boat i'll 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 tell you yeah. that it's it's because because you you do really like them like you know He's a great actor. Uh, my grandparents and, are fine, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Right, whatever. Um, how no, about... I was, I was in a joke about not liking my grandparents that much. Uh, you, you pulled out on it? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. One of them was wearing a Puminati shirt. She's, she's a fan. We can't, I can't be putting down fans, all right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Not in these trying times. No. Um Let's uh, then let's get into a couple voicemails. Yay! We actually have quite a bit, I believe. Just double tap this shit. Um, Mike I, Hopkins can come serve us some some shit. I believe this one is from Arts, our friend Arts. Mad Science Party Hour. The fuck is up? I got a random brain come question. I'm gonna be in and out this time. So. Originally, my random brain question was, why do mannequins have nipples? And now my random brain question is, why am I so distracted by mannequin nipples? All right, I love you. Bye. He was right. That was brief. I I thought he said it was going to be brief, and then it was really not going to be brief. I like that he still has his um, trademark tea kettle going off in the background of all of his calls. Does that? (laughs) Yeah, what do you... Isn't that like he has like some sort of like dab rig timer where like he has like some sort of like fucking stopwatch or like? Do you hear that whistling going on in the background though? Because I I I I didn't notice it. Here, here, let me listen. Listen close. All right, I I love you. Bye. You hear it trail off at the end. I heard it. It's it's either that or he's on the set of like a 1950s sci-fi movie. But to answer Arts' random brain question, I'm pretty sure. They put nipples on mannequins so women will know how they'll look in the, that top when they have hard nipples, right? I would assume that would be what it would be for. And to Arts' second point, I would say don't feel bad because I one time, and I admitted this on the podcast years and years ago, but I was driving down Melrose and it's a pretty fashion slash garment heavy district on this one section of Melrose in in Hollywood. And I saw a really nice butt, got distracted, traffic stopped in front of me. Got into an accident. Very, very close. I slammed on the brakes. There was a loud screech, and I stopped just before crashing into the car in front of me. And when I looked back, it was a mannequin. (laughs) I almost crashed checking out a mannequin's ass. Yeah. Oh, that would have been really one of the more embarrassing stories in MSPH history. Yeah. So this was in a window that you were... No. A... They put it on the sidewalk. 
How did the mannequin get outside? I think they're sentient. Did you ever see that movie where if you smooch one, it comes to life? <laughs> called that mannequin. Was yeah. Was that with Ryan Gosling? Yeah. What was it called? Statue fucker. <laughs> no, mannequin, starring oh, yeah. Andrew McCarthy and Kim Cattrall. In Hollywood. Do you have that in front of you? Like, how? What is that? How do you know that? That's a eighties classic. Who Andrew McCarthy is. How? What? The, oh, Jeff. Come on, Am you're I in your up here? you're in your mid thirties, Jeff. You should know these things. I just got to my. Oh, actually, no, I've been here for a few months. So you never saw Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, I mean, once, like when I was like fucking six. What? Oh my god! We'll just say no. Actually, we'll just say no. I've probably seen Weekend at Bernie's dozens of times. I fucking loved that movie as a kid. Okay. I don't know why either, but I loved it. And I also loved Mannequin. I watched Mannequin a fuckload. It was on HBO all the time when I was a kid. Shuddy, so please is this guy show me a, what I think you're going to show me. A director, a producer, or an actor? Who is this Andrew Yes, McCarthy? I do own it. Yes! <laughs> oh, get it out of that shrink wrap and fire it up. Nobody's wanted to watch it with me. That's why it's still in the... Uh... You know what? You need to sit Draven down and be like, look, you got named after the Oh, crow. my God. If I forced the boys to watch this... Oh my god! I it after, has James Spader in it. Yeah, he's the also. bad guy, and the and the the one of the guys from Police Academy. He's the security guard. I think that might have also been the first time I was exposed to a gay character in Hollywood. I was like, I like this guy. He acts like my nana. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, Shuddy. Estelle Getty is also in it. Yeah, she's the one that runs the department store. How long have you had that Blu-ray for? It's been a while. I think I got it in like the five, the seven dollar Blu-ray bin at Walmart. What a steal! That movie kicks ass. I fucking love Mannequin. I'm gonna see if they still more or have less it for than sale. Judgment Night. <sighs> Holy shit, Shuddy! That Blu-ray on Amazon is twenty four dollars now. Yeah, I uh, got it. You can real flip cheap. it. Just save it though, because it might be, it'll probably be worth like $32 in a couple of years. What do you think its average five star rating on Amazon is, Jeff? Mannequin. Yeah. How many does it, uh, do you have it in front of you? Is there enough? I do. To... I know. I know the answer. Okay. Average five star. I think you mean what its rating is on. I'll go, wait, can you do, I'll go 3.6. Is that even possible or is it only half? Like, Half stars. Uh, no, you can you can get that specific. That's I'll, I'll go, all right. No, no, I want to go two point nine. All right. What about you, Shuddy? Have you already? I'm looked looking at it right now. Uh, so, uh, okay. It's just at first glance, out of one thousand two hundred and ninety three ratings, it's five stars. But when you hover the mouse over it, it's four point eight. Out of five. Yeah. I'm surprised the sequel is a 4.6 out of five. I know. I've never even seen the sequel, but I heard it. I have. That has Christy Swanson in it. Oh, she's the mannequin. Yeah. Yeah. That one is even more batshit crazy than the first one because she's like a princess that this creepy count from her country is trying to awaken her to fall in love with her to be in charge of the country it's fucking bizarre yeah because i remember the kim Cattrall. she was like an ancient egyptian or some shit yeah and i forget the, statue the process of a that... hexed bavarian maiden comes to life for its keeper in a philadelphia department store <laughs> oh so fucking ridiculous uh, all right. Well, thank you for the voicemail, Art. Always appreciated. Hope that tea was good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you. Man, we really traveled the world on that voicemail. Seriously, thank <laughs> you for the mileage. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Clawful, Shuddy Boy. This is for you. I want to pinch your nipples with my claws, Kevin. I'm looking at you too, Jeff. Jeff. You want to see my other claw? 
Igor. I will rule this shit. You lock me in here. I will <laughs> get out and I will rule you. You watch it, goddammit, Shreddy. How dare you lock us in these gates? <laughs> Holy deliverance. <laughs> this is cut punk. I'm going to take you this, on the This is backside. cunt shit. Cunt punk? I'm going to fucking pound it in your shit flip. You're never going to see that. <laughs> fuck but you want to know what? Every time so, you have a fucking poopy. Do you know the origin of this? <laughs> I know that this is what they do after happy hour. They do a group call to the voicemail to play different He-Man characters. So that's... Uh, that's a fun tradition. I know that Chief Brody is involved. I know that Guy on a Buffalo is involved. Uh, I don't know who else is part of the crew, but yes, I know that they've figured out a way to Conference all call? call the voicemail together. So that's multiple <laughs> people. <laughs> and it, they usually, as happened there, they can't keep it together long enough to finish it. Well, there's 60 seconds left of this, Shuddy Boy. From now on, you're going to remember me, ain't you, Jeff? Hey, Shuddy Boy, this is Mexican Skeletor. Why are you going to do this, bro? <laughs> and this is DJ. I need a By practice the power of shit. His. <laughs> I'm coming. Hey, 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 this is this is Irish fucking skeleton. <laughs> hey, Shuddy, this is fucking trap. Go out there here again. How crazy that shower shit. Then I'm on the timer. You guys are stupid. <laughs> Dude, we haven't even hit a minute. Sir, there's like seven people there. This is never going to get played. <laughs> this is Mothman. I'm coming to you. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Our happy hours are fun. Yeah, I'm glad those guys enjoyed themselves. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, this one doesn't have much of a transcription going for it. Let's see what this is. Here you go. Ooh. I think someone's going to poop on camera or on uh, audio. Oh, that was a very aggressive bong hit. All right. Old school. It's been a long time since anybody called in and just left us a bong hit. I like it. Shout Thank out to you. Friend. Yeah. Ugh. Shout out to you, my stone friend. They got the voicemail number by listening to the podcast, and that's the most important thing about all the voicemails. Yes. Or that guy, that's just a happy coincidence. Some guy called a random number and did a bong hit. Nice gift to us. Kevin that's a very Kraft, nice coincidence. like, why do you have to be such... What the fuck? Kevin Kraft, like, why do you have to be such a diva? Like, as if, what ev? <laughs> also, random brain question... How many babies do you think it would take to build a bridge? t wants to know. Later, boys. What the fuck? He said how many babies it would take to build a bridge? Yeah. Um, wow. 17. If they go through the proper training, yeah, 17. Like you're building guess. a bridge out of babies, or the babies are building the no, bridge? No, the building. I, I was doing it that the babies were building the bridge. They were not the material the bridge was made out of. Yeah, I thought it was a, like <laughs> oh. a, a contractor company made uh, completely staffed by infants. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel no, like that's the not answer... a bridge paved with baby carcasses. Right. I... <laughs> I feel like the answer is going to be similar. Actually, it's going to take a, it's going to take a lot of babies to figure this out. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see what this one is. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Joel. What the fuck is wrong with people? Um, you guys were uh, talking about Mountain Dew when Shuddy was drinking that old ass Mountain Dew, <laughs> and uh, Jeff asked what Mountain Dew, like what you would mix it with. Believe it or not, Mountain Dew was invented 
to be a mixer for whiskey. That's the reason we have Mountain Dew, is because it was invented to be a mixer for whiskey. So just wanted to let you know. Keep doing what you're doing. Love you guys. And, uh, yeah, what the fuck is wrong, people? Later. I'm very surprised you didn't know that, Shuddy, Captain Mountain Dew. No, I now need that, that fact checked. No, no, now that uh, he has said that, I I do remember saying that in a soda jerk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because one of the sodas I did was Dr. Enough that was made by the same manufacturer that created Mountain Dew. Huh. And Mountain Dew was created to be a cocktail mixer. You know what, Shuddy? So, um, next time I go to the Grove, because I think a lot of that has, has opened back up, I got to pop by the farmer's market and see if that soda stand is still there. Because they have like, it's it's like a little booth. I don't know if we ever went to that when you've been in L.A., but we've gone to the farmer's market a bunch of times, but we've, we've never visited the soda booth. I didn't know that there was a soda booth. No. Yeah. And it's, it's nothing but like bottled sodas that are just weird, random off the beaten path ones. So I'll have to see if I'm there's in. any cool ones I can send you. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for the, um, Mountain Dew history lesson there. What the fuck is wrong with people? Uh, but you were a guest on that show recently, weren't you? I sure was. Yeah. How'd that go? I thought he was I thought he was fucking pissed at me from his last <laughs> voicemail. Jesus Christ. Um, well, you are a douchebag. I, I am a douchebag. Notorious diva. Uh, this? What up, bro? Me? It's bunch. Triple D. Daddy Dirty Vic. Senior Long Dick the Third. But uh no, I was just sitting <laughs> here with my dog Telly, little little beautiful little twenty pound shit too, and I was picking out his eye boogers and he was just so infatuated him. He 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 had to eat him, and I just don't know if I didn't fuck up, and maybe he could buy. She we he should be called a chubby boy the third. Uh, your opinion next week, Shuddy, Do you ever eat your eye boogers? No, just my nose ones. Sometimes my butt crack boogers. Did you ever eat your dog's eye boogers? No. What do you eat, Allie's eye boogers? <laughs> no, but I don't eat any boogers. I don't know. It's not a out of the line question. I feel like for you, you're really tight with your dogs and you like boogers. So didn't mean to offend you. Does I have um, every dog have eye boogers. I, I would imagine so. Humans get eye boogers. I, f I feel like every yeah. living creature with eyeballs gets eye boogers unless they live in the sea. <laughs> I get morning crusties. You're right. I have a memory I'd like to share with you guys. I don't nice. know how true this is, but I've had this memory in my head from when I was in fourth grade. And our librarian, I think, was subbing for the teacher that day. And on my desk was a speck that I thought was chocolate. And I ate it. And, and it, it was poopies. No, it was... Very, very disgusting, and it freaked me out, and I don't know why, but my fourth grade brain and deductive abilities told me that it was the librarian's eye booger that I ate. I feel like when she walked by, she rubbed her eye, and an eye booger fell, and best case scenario, I assumed it was chocolate, and I ate it, and I think it was an eye boogie. I don't know. You're using retarded logic to explain retarded logic. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't even know how to count. I can't. I can't really comprehend or understand what nine-year-old Kevin <laughs> was thinking. Yeah, I'm having a hard time with it myself. But I've been convinced ever since that I ate her eye booger. <sighs> it couldn't have been. I mean, it could have been like a pencil shaving. You said it was, it was, it was, a, was it, it was a very tiny, sticky, was a goopy? chunk. It was a chunk, like consistency of an eye boogie. I, I don't know why. I, I, to me, eye boogies are like crusty. They're not. They're not like. They don't like. 
stick to my fingers really when I if I ever have a crusty or well, that's why I, I think she rubbed her eye, eye and it knocked it down onto my desk. We can move on. This is gross for me. Yeah, this is. Gr- I don't know. This is like really grossing me out right now. My stomach is starting to turn. Well, thank you for the voicemail, Daddy Dirty Dick. <laughs> yeah, Moving thanks. right along. Let's pretend that never happened. MSPH, what's up? Look at my anus. Let's just get to the point. <laughs> I had a dream last night that I shit myself. Oh. I'm 36 years old, and I can honestly say it's never happened before, and it was terribly alarming. I don't even remember what was happening in the dream. I just remember having shorts on. I'm feeling like I had to fart, and I looked down, and it was like someone dropped a pudding cup down my leg, and it just splatted on the floor. <laughs> now, I've pissed myself before while I was sleeping, thinking that I was peeing in a pool or relieving myself in a urinal. I've so been there. I was scared to death when I opened my eyes and jumped up out of bed. Fortunately, there was no shit in the bed. Victory. My wife would have been uh not too surprised or not too happy about that. Um which brought me to uh a thought that I had about uh would Jeff Clark suck a dick? <laughs> Jeff, would you suck oh, a wow. dick? Or would you have to take a shit in your pants at the same time every day for the rest of your life. Sure, some of those could be at home. You might be able to catch them in the potty, drop a little deucey deuce in the toilet, but some might be when you're out on a date with a girl right in the middle of a restaurant. Well, that's not going to happen. Would you suck that dick, Jack? Everybody, keep up the good work. Jeff, keep on these guys. No pussy shit. (laughs) <laughs> thanks look at my anus uh i'm not gonna suck that dick no i'll just plan my entire existence around my shit schedule which i pretty much already do anyways it's not that much of a difference yeah my ass is always calling the shots <laughs> right i mean when i gotta go i gotta go and that's it so and and like i feel like if if he said that question, the way it was phrased, led me to believe that it would be the same time every single day. So you just wouldn't schedule a date for that time. Or if you knew you were going to be on a date when shit o'clock would happen, you just set a timer on your watch and be like, oh, excuse me, I have to go use the gentleman's room. And then you go poop in there. And it would, could a dub here or there as a decent icebreaker? Could be. It's like yeah, I have an alarm that goes off at the same time every day. Like why? Why does? It, why do you have an alarm for the same time every day? It's like well, I made a deal with the devil, and either I suck a dick or I just got to take <laughs> a shit at this time every day. And, and you know what? I'm a, I'm a simple man. I like things just having. I like things just being planned out for me and decisions made for me. Fair and enough. I know I'm going to take a poop at four twenty five every day. They're going to let me smoke a bowl. But I'm gonna get, I'm gonna take a shit right after. Oh yeah, what if that was the time? Four twenty. I, I mean, I would, I would, I would make it work. I mean, there is no time that's that important to me where I'd suck a dick to not have to shit. I feel like I've gotten this one before. What about well, not this one specifically, but something similar? What about four twenty a.m.? So you're always like shitting your pants in the middle of the night, or you have to wake up super early every day? Nah, dude. Even I wake weekends. up super early, anyways. You you're up at four a.m. every like, day. Uh, I have been for the past couple of days. Yeah. Oh, that sucks ass. Yeah, I'm kind of weird, that. dude. I go to sleep at like eight thirty, and then I wake up at like I was up at three thirty the other day. I do like my best sports betting, writing, thinking at like four to seven a.m. So you're like a John Madden like vampire. Yeah, it's weird. Plus, there's a lot of stuff to bet on nowadays, so I got a lot to read, a lot to focus on. Fair enough. A lot of money to waste. All right. Got an, oh, my goodness. All right. Well, uh, the law firm. I see we're in for a treat after this voicemail. So prep yourselves now. Hi, MSPH. It's uh, psychological on the Discord and Iron the Giant and Kevin's heart. Um, I just keep listening to the other show, and Kevin keeps talking about his workout. 
what are you doing now, Kevin? How many push-ups are you up to? You, you inspired me. Alice, you were doing three sets of 10. Alice talked about bump it to 12. You're saying now you're doing 70. Are you doing two sets? I'm trying to keep up. Man, this is a, it's very inspirational to see somebody out there. Like, I'm 35. You're a couple years older than me, but I, I'm in the greatest shape yeah, I've ever are. been. Thanks to just push-ups, sit-ups, fucking eating better, trying to crush it out here. So, what are you doing? I want to know, because I, 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 man, it's working for you. Thanks, guys. Talk to me. Oh, also, just the pussy. <laughs> I well, like that guy. He's grown in the happy hour power rankings in recent weeks. He's nice. Yeah, he's uh he's he's become an integral part of happy hour. The dude's a trip. He looks like Canadian Dane Cook and kind of sounds like him too. <laughs> well, speaking of Discord, I saw like people in our Discord found some other Discord and just infiltrated it and trolled it. And the people who ran that Discord channel like looked at everybody's bios and saw that the connecting thread was they like Mad Scientist Party Hour. So whatever community that was, I don't even know what the fuck it was. I don't even think it was another podcast. Those people, not many, but spammed us with a few one-star reviews on iTunes. So Son of a bitch! Anybody God who, damn it. Anybody who hasn't given us a five-star review yet, if your account is uh, still MSPH fresh... Uh, it wouldn't hurt if you if you hopped over and gave us a couple of five stars to counteract because we had I don't even know what the fuck was going on. I just saw about it after the fact. That wasn't anything we directed. A bunch of these just goobers took it upon themselves to do some Discord trolling, and somehow it got tied back to us. So if you would, oh, mind, I can explain I know... this. Oh God, is this something we even want explained? I mean, don't you want don't you want some explanation to it? I I had no involvement in it directly. Uh, I I've always said I I'm down for like hate mail, some troll comments, but leaving one star reviews, man, I have a lot to think about. We might have to engage in a fucking war with these pussies. So somehow, Puminati Discord Patreon found out that about Cincinnati Discord. The the city of Cincinnati in Ohio has a whole fucking Discord channel. And they infiltrated it and tried to spam, internally spam the Cincinnati Discord. Now, one of the guys, one of the Puminati who did this, changed their name to Jeff Clark, he slash they, which <laughs> was really a trip for me because I, I, I got in the Discord the other day and was talking some shit and I just see at the bottom of it, Jeff Clark, he slash they is typing dot dot dot. I was like, and I started laughing. Like, what the, the fuck is this? Like, what, what is hey, this those aren't shit? my pronouns. So I guess, and I, this is just from the screen. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> it was just from the, sc- the screenshot that they put uh, Puminati Discord put in our Discord. Uh, I guess they Googled my name and they found out that I was oh. in the Mad Scientist Party Hour. And that's how. They got to, and the disc or the screenshot that someone put in there said, Jeff Clark is the host of a delightful podcast called Mad Scientist Party Hour. Oh my so God. When I, so when I read that, I was like, oh, they like the podcast. All right. That's cool, I guess. And now we have like a fucking, a war going with Cincinnati, with the city of Cincinnati. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. The one star review on iTunes says, wow, amazingly rude. <laughs> this podcast likes to invade discord servers to cause uh, chaos and make people uncomfortable obviously these are people who do that for no other reason but to be trolls disgusting yeah you see That's what bullshit. you you see what you motherfuckers are doing carrying out bullshit in our name oh man there's I know exactly who changed their name to. I'm not going to blow their spot up, but you motherfucker. Man, I don't even have Cost. time to really hang out in our Discord. These motherfuckers got time to spend in like 15 different Discords. It's all fun and games until our goddamn iTunes or Apple Podcast rating goes down, you motherfuckers. Yeah. You guys, it is pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny, I think. We just, we got to figure out another way to attack them, guys. We're going to. I'm going to have to get on Discord tonight and strategize because they've went a little too far. I, I don't know what was said in the Cincinnati Discord. <laughs> it apparently ruffled some feathers. But you're going to come at our goddamn 
Apple review, uh, Apple rating. Come on, too far. I, I hopefully they're listening to this. Well, that's this the thing, Jeff. You idea. always this wasn't. You always like to like. You're the one who's always pushing to start shit, and most of the times, myself and Shuddy are like, "All right, well, every time you start shit, you do leave yourself open for repercussions." So, like, yeah, if you go and you poke people, sometimes they poke back, and you're like, "Oh no, no poke backs." So no, no, no. The the idea is entertained. I feel like in the past, our other producers. Are podcasters and in that case it's like you know it's street war if i talk shit to them they talk shit to me we're cool i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spam their their uh apple podcast rating this is well people fight like pussies cunting. these days i've I, but uh, the cincinnati oh. discord isn't they're not in our world so like this might not even be that's why there's a lot to unpack there's a lot for me to think about because this isn't really pussy behavior out of them if it's expected, you know? But at the same point, it's like, man, now you guys are really fucking with our shit. And that's not chill. That is not chill. If you want to, if you want to find a way to troll back, get in the comments on the YouTube. Good and fine. I, I've been called a lot of unflattering things on that, but now you're making our stats go down and that is not appreciated. Not at all. <laughs> you might've went too far Cincinnati. you fucking pussies and i bet against your shitty baseball team tonight too i You're- i say you call that asshole out now nah. put him on blast no we handle we handle these things in the locker room shuddy we're a fucking team the Pumatons all the right team. so then tell me who it is and i'll kick them from the discord it's pretty simple no oh, we don't Chris. need people doing this kind of bullshit in our name like that's fucked uh oh, this, this took a turn towards Serious Town. This is Serious to Town. Uh oh. Well, you at you I at guess home I'll just know, who, know what you did. And I get. I mean, I could very easily just search through the Discord for it and find the offending culprit and hit him in the face with my big swinging dick band hammer. See, it's all fun and games, guys, until Shuddy gets pissed. I hope you're happy. Yeah, great. Now Dad's home. Are you? Did you? <laughs> I thought you knew about all this already. Me? I didn't know about the one star reviews. I saw what happened in the. But if it's negatively impacting us, that shit's not going to go on. Period. I am saying that, and oh, I'm not even putting it to a vote. It's, it oh, feels like a, a ricochet, though. You know, like shrap metal. Like I don't think anyone in the Puminati intended for this to happen, but this is where we're at now. metal. <laughs> Did I did I not use that right? Uh, I, I believe the term you were looking for was shrapnel. <laughs> what did I say? Shrap metal. Shrap metal. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> Isn't that what cor- <laughs> corn is uh, categorized as? <laughs> oh man, I always thought it was shrap metal. <laughs> what is that word again? Shrapnel. <laughs> All right, well, to pivot off of that, I'll, I'll actually answer the voicemailer's question. Uh, Shrapnel. Wow, I feel like a man. You fart like face. This, this, is, this went off the rails. <laughs> so what I've been doing is I have those perfect push-up things, the rotating ones. So I'll do three sets of 14, and my goal is to next week bump it up to 15. And then any time throughout the day I see the... I glance at the perfect push-up things on the floor. I'll drop down and do 14 more. So I'll do anywhere from like 70 to like 100-ish push-ups a day. And um, I've got dumbbells. So I do like, uh, I do curls with those and like whatever the overhead thing is with them. And I got, Ellis gave me some on it kettlebells. So I do like squats with the kettlebells and then lift them up and shit. I got a pull-up bar. So I do like 15 pull-ups a day. I'm trying to get that number up, but my arms are still like spaghetti-ish. My tits are still <laughs> bitch. a little a little gross. They're getting smaller, but like there's still a little, a little bit of meat, meat hanging on. Like my pecs are coming through. Um, I've been pretty good with the routine. The only day I took off was the day after my second uh, vaccine shot where I was a little banged up. But day before it, day after it, kept the routine up. I do... Um, 
I plank. I do two one-minute planks every day because I'm trying to burn off like I got the spare tire still going. I'm still a little gross and flabby in the stomach. And as we learned, if I do fucking bicycle crunches, I get vertigo. Because apparently I'm just made out of the softest material on earth. Can't even handle fucking bicycle crunches. So I do, uh, I do planks. I plank for a minute at a time. I do a couple of those. And, um, you know, I'm, it's so fucking time consuming that I've fallen off on yoga and the exercise bike. But I'm trying to find the discipline to get that back in. Get work, get the yoga going again, the DDP yoga, and get some cardio in on the exercise bike. And that compared with, um, you know, working on my diet, cutting out snacks. I haven't eaten ice cream in weeks. Um, I've been really good with cutting out the snacks. Sometimes my meals aren't all that great, but diet's been improving. And I haven't lost any weight. I'm still at 170, but I'm seeing, like, I'm getting more muscle and my gross midsection is noticeably shrinking. So that's what I've been doing. That's, that's been working so far. Canadian Dane Cook is a regular at the happy hour, and he's, no, he's looking noticeably uh, sleeker, and like the push-ups are really helping him out, and he's been specifically shouting you out over a recent week saying that you're like his inspiration. So Oh, no shit. See, we're doing... See Cincinnati, we're doing good things around here too. Yeah, we're not all bad. I'm trying to, like, in in the next month or two, I want to be completely non ashamed to take my shirt off, so I can make beach trips, uh, and not gross out the person I'm going with. You'll just blind them. Yeah. Well, I've been you know, going on. PCness. I've been trying to go on walks too. And uh, I've been getting a little bit more sun. You would never guess it by the the camera feed you're seeing right now. Because I still look like a, a featureless <laughs> ghost. Yeah, you're mad translucent. But I feel like um, if I get a little bit m- less gross, maybe in a couple of weeks, I wouldn't be opposed to going for my morning walks shirtless and tanning this gross Irish corpse body that I've been walking around with. And getting a little bit of a primer, head start before I blind everybody ah, at the beach. All right, you guys. Ready? I have to just uh, lay out on just, your uh, on your balcony. Sun does not. Yeah, get just to give it. me give me like an hour heads up before you go on this walk, so I can meet you and call you a homo. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready? Yes. Thank. You. So. I realize I'd never seen what you three look like. I'd only heard your voices on that podcast you guys put out. Oh, God. And it's going to be bad. I got to say, I'm looking at you right now, and I think you need to change the name of your show to the Children of Chernobyl Hour. (laughs) I've never seen such a disturbing tableau of stunted masculinity than what I'm looking at right now. (laughs) Person with the beard there. Where were you on January 6th, 2021? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw you raiding the U.S. Capitol, chasing down some crazy conspiracy theory that was in your head. I'm just stunned. When you're not podcasting, are you investigating chemtrails and 5G? Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now, the middle fella there, the little guy, Aww. You, I've never seen somebody who looks so much like they sound. You look like if, let me put this together here. You look like if Gwyneth Paltrow and Rachel Maddow had a baby. (laughs) And while Gwyneth Paltrow was pregnant with you, she developed a meth addiction, which led to her having a miscarriage in a Taco Bell bathroom where she left your writhing, gasping fetus on the filthy floor until you were picked up and nursed to health by a janitor who held you captive for 15 years in his windowless basement while he used your pale, disgusting body to satisfy every dark sexual need that he possessed until you managed to escape and start a podcast. (laughs) Wow. It does what he sounds like, right? That is what he sounds like. Now, the (laughs) remaining guy, I think I've got you pegged, my friend. 
You're the one whose voice sounds like Miss Piggy's quiet, disappointing orgasm. You're a goddamn handsome man. That's it. No joke. No put-downs. You look like Christian Bale or a young Brando. A leading man. I'd be proud to take you out. I'd be proud to have you as a wingman. Why do you give off such micro-penis energy when you speak? <laughs> so listen to me. When the world opens up, I'm going to come to you with a choice. I'm going to come to you, and here's what you're going to need to choose. I'm going to gas up the jet, and I'm going to take you to Vegas. And you're going to have to choose between coming with me and entering a manhood that you can be proud of, where you'll be baptized in a hotel, hotel pool party and a freshly waxed sorority, or you can stay there with Captain QAnon and the Taco Bell miscarriage. The choice is yours, but the time's coming. So be ready. It's your choice. Holy shit. Wow. And I man. wanna wait, hold on. I just officially I wanna go I do wanna go to the Vegas pool party with the hot sorority. That's I, I choose that one with the <laughs> private jet. Again, I've given this guy props on this before. The voicemail line has a three minute cutoff. Two minutes and fifty nine seconds. This guy fucking nails it every time. Like he should have been a now DJ that you're saying like it. talking up records. Like this guy would be awesome at uh, at hitting the post. Now that you're saying it, he might have some sort of timer. Well, he only listened that one time, so probably not. But if he did listen to our response to his voicemails, he could have this plan moving forward. Or, I mean, it is probably more fun to just assume that he's a savant and that he just knows. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, shit, we got it. uh, Except for Jeff, we got it pretty hard on the chin there. We really did. Yeah, no, it's it's all cool for me. Yeah, yeah. that guy, he I'm likes a... me for whatever reason. And I don't know if I should be happy about that or nervous, but yeah, I own a warehouse that you get ass fucked in, Kevin, and I'm going on a private jet to a Vegas pool party with a whole bunch of sorority. I'm going to have, I'm going to officially enter manhood the right way. So I I'm just going to, I'm just going to come to, to Long Beach and, Smack you on the back of the head with a, uh, with a, um, what do they call those things? A slapjack? <laughs> shrap metal. Shrap metal. Yeah, I'm gonna beat you over the head with some shrap metal. Um, put on a cardigan and a and a white V neck, and a backwards Yankee hat, and be like, all right, or uh, uh, is the is the jet all fueled up? Let's go. <laughs> Come on, pussy, I'm ready to gamble. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's exactly what I would say in that spot. So Always hit on 16. It. Even though, you no, know, you're that Rachel McAdams, Gwyneth Paltrow ass motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want you ruining my pussy getting grift in Vegas. Mike Hopkins is going to bring your bitch ass to Vegas. Man, yeah, whatever. I wasn't sure about this episode coming into it, but we've really done a lot here. <laughs> well, we got we got one more voicemail to clear out the banks if you guys are down. Yes. Let's let's roll. All let's right. do it. Mad scientist party hour. It's wet melons. I have a wood <laughs> jeff suck a dick. I'm listening. It's been so long since he got laid. Would he suck a dick? To get laid. That's, that's it. Love you guys. That's me. See ya. Kicking a man when he's down. Yeah, come on, bro. <laughs> of course not. Only if the guy was really hot. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't even really struck out on Tinder or Bumble or the the Hitch. That's because you uh, haven't been hit, on them. The Hinge one. Yeah, so after... After a good six to seven months worth of just K's, just strikeouts on Tinder, maybe present me with that dick and that that <laughs> vagina. <laughs> I'll see. Yeah, can I look at the vagina while I'm sucking the dick? <laughs> yeah, that would make it less K, right? As motivation. Yeah, I'll want to finish the dick faster to get on the other end of it to that pussy. <laughs> Oh man. Oh uh, well I don't think yeah, we're gonna I'm top winded. that. Yeah, I don't think we're topping that one. <laughs> but um shout out to everybody. Thank you guys so much for listening. 
Um, if you need more Mad Scientist Party Hour in your life, I strongly advise you to check out our Patreon. We do an extra bonus podcast there every week. And then the uh, the top tier has videos of that uh, podcast or Patreon episode, as well as all our individual shows and our combined shows. Tons and tons of content. Once you sign up, you unlock it all. So well over three years worth of content is waiting at your fingertips at patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. Um, these videos we've been doing over Zoom these past few months, they're all up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash mad scientist party hour. And you can follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. At Jeff Rowe Records. And at MSPH Podcast on both. Uh, if you want to be a part of voicemails, yay. Good Lord, just call 201-472-0139 and leave a message after the beep. Or you can just shoot your emails to madscientistpartyhour at gmail.com. Uh, Shuddy, do you have anything you want to throw out there? No, sir. Check out Fade the Media, Jeff's other podcast. I'll catch you next time, friends. But until next time, ooh, something. <laughs>